So a bit about me. You could say I fell into the industry by mistake 21 years ago. My previous life was spent in professional and semi-professional soccer, or football for the purists amongst us. And finally, I ended up in New Zealand in the mid-80s. And before I knew it, the New Zealand Football Association forced a New Zealand passport onto me and told me to play for the national team, the All Whites. That was 25 kilos ago. <laughs> so in 1992, we'd just finished a two-month overseas tour. The results had been average. And it's fair to say the New Zealand soccer team are far more capable now than they were in those days. It's also fair to say that regionally, we would only ever get so far before we came up against a bunch of guys that called themselves the Socceroos. So I thought maybe it was time to get a real job, maybe something in sales. That's a safe bet, and it'd give me flexibility to sneak off early for training sessions in the evenings. A week later, I ended up in the offices of recruitment company Drake International in Auckland, looking for a sales job. Coincidentally, they were looking for a sales executive. Somehow, I fitted the bill. And the rest is history, as they say. Since then, I've worked for a whole variety of recruitment companies, varying shapes and sizes across three continents, and at different times based in New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, and the UK. During this time, I worked for some of the world's largest publicly listed recruitment companies, and also some of the largest privately owned recruitment companies, from a Fortune company to a FTSE company, to an ASX company. So I'd like to touch on a few observations that 21 years in the industry has provided. Observation number one. Big is not always beautiful. I'm constantly amazed over the years how size and infrastructure equals process and policy. And that's OK in itself, if managed in a balanced way. But in many instances, the process and policy, and I can see you shaking your heads now, equals covering one's backsides, equals navel gazing, and ultimately equals underserviced clients and candidates. The irony is that process and policy are supposed to improve service delivery, when often they do the exact opposite. It can be rare for someone to say, hold on a minute, let's put our clients and our candidates at the center of this. What do they want? It's just too easy, especially in today's economic environment, to be internally focused and to forget about the real people that matter. It's great that Talent International is continually looking outwards. On arriving here only three weeks ago, I was massively impressed by the intense passion for first-class service. And I don't want this to sound like I'm selling a particular airline. Observation number two. There is a difference between service ethics and service delivery. There probably aren't many mission or vision statements around that don't have some reference to service delivery, whether it be along the lines of delivering world-class service to exceeding customer expectations. Service delivery can mean many different things, but over the years, I've observed a difference between service delivery and service ethics. When times are tough, People say the first thing that gets cut is marketing and advertising. I'd argue that when times are tough, the first thing that gets cut is service ethics. Companies will continue to deliver service for whatever a client's looking for. But when times get tough, how much does the whole service ethic thing change? Corners are cut, responsiveness drops, and we accept mediocrity. Everyone's always getting pressured for savings and efficiencies and do more with less. And the loser is always the clients and the candidates. I hear people say, times are tough for us, our clients, our candidates. We're all in the same boat. And I have to say, somehow at Talent International, we've managed to maintain our service ethics. In a tough environment, we've managed to strike the balance, deliver on expectations, and also hold a line and not cut corners. Observation number three. Innovate, or at least be relevant. The current economic environment can pressure companies and drive behaviors. I understand that everyone's human, and operating processes get tweaked as people look for different ways of doing things. However, in current times, 
it's the special companies that are able to innovate, or as I like to say, stay relevant. Innovation means different things to different people. It could be as simple as a minor change in a transaction process, or to some bright, shiny, sexy piece of machinery. The key is being relevant. And being relevant means adding value. But we can't add value if we don't know what value means to our clients and our candidates. And I constantly challenge the people that work with me to understand what our clients and our candidates perceive as true value. And we won't know unless we stay close to them. Now, I know this can all sound a little motherhood, but I truly believe Talent International is trying to make a difference. Richard, the management team, and everyone throughout the business have a determination for change, to be different and to lead the industry in a bold and different way. So to close, given the growth plans and the journey that Talent International is embarking on, I'd like to think that my experience over the last 21 years in the industry around the world is well aligned and that I have true value to add. My time spent in different cultures and markets, observing different expectations of service, will also be beneficial. And finally, at times, I've seen some great instances of innovation that were never maximized and ended up as missed opportunity because we didn't truly collaborate with our clients and our candidates. Somehow, given the audience today, with what people will take away, I don't think that that's going to happen. And it's on this note that I'll finish with an emphasis on truly working together to help us all succeed individually and by default help us to continue to lead our industry. Thank you. Great to be here and enjoy the rest of your day.